All right, we're going to break this down. I do want you to do better than I've done in, um, in trucking. I know I've been gone for a minute and you haven't really seen me much. Also, the main channel that I'm on as far as Instagram is My Life, My Nikon. Uh, the Trucker Brown one got too visceral, so right now go follow My Life, My Nikon. But today, we're going to figure out a way for you to be successful. Number one, we need to figure out what is successful in trucking. We're going to do that today on the Trucker Brown channel. Successful in trucking to me, it, it means a lot of things. It, it doesn't just mean money, which is something that I've had to learn the, uh, the incredible hard way. If you're really trying to be successful in trucking, you need to figure out what it is, that you, how long you want to be gone. Uh, you need to figure out what city you want to live in. You need to figure out what are your health goals. Because uh, if, if you're only tracking money, you're, you're not taking care of your health goals. And, and that's something that you need to have a clear understanding before you, when you come into this. Because you can lose track of, you can lose track of your health, you can lose track of family, you can lose track of a lot of things. So you need to understand that walking in the door. You need to figure out, are you an OTR guy or you're not? You need to figure out if you're the, I'm a boss person and I'm going to make all of this money. You need to figure out if you're one of them people. Or you need to figure out if, you know, I wanted to make 50, 60 grand a year and raise a family and all of those. Maybe that's you. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with either one of them. That's number one. But you need to really, really figure that out. Because if you're trying to, if you come into the game and you don't know, then the game will decide for you. And once it decides for you, you'll end up finding yourself in a position that you technically don't want to be in anymore. And then you're in a position you just don't want to be in. And you don't, you don't want to start acquiring serious debts until you figure out where you want to be for the long haul. So a, a person may say, you know, my bills are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and 60 grand a year is good enough for me because I have a very comprehensive savings plan. And that is success to them. They are legitimately successful. They're being able to go on vacations. They're able to save for their retirement in the long haul, all of these different things. What is that for you? You do not want it to where somebody on here is picking it for you. You really don't. And they're all going to... these. These channels are like churches, okay? And most of the guys on here are just preachers that believe in their own idiosyncrasies and all that other bulls crap. And they will tell you anything. Another thing you'll find out too is that most of them are not doing what they're telling you to do. And that is that could be disheartening at some times, but it is what it is. What you want to figure out, what you want to do, you need to figure it, you need to know that you're going to have to do that for a long period of time. So you need to be sure that's what you want to do. Don't be convinced. This is not a game you want to come to in, in your gullible or your follower. Because you will end up following the wrong people. And end up in some bullpen or something like that. <laughs> Figure out exactly how much you're trying to save. There's a couple of key things you need to think about. You need to think about health care. Because health is wealth, as they say. So before you start breaking down what kind of car you can get, and what kind of house you can get, and where you could live, and, and, and all of those things, you need to already know how much is my health care. How much... Is healthcare costing average for the country and for what I'm doing? That's one number. Number two, you need to figure out what is your retirement savings? 
put that right on top of the healthcare number, right? Then now you know this is coming out no matter what, no matter where I go, no matter what job I'm doing, no matter, this is coming out. Don't look at the overall number without factoring those two numbers. An average person will say I'll put $150 away a week into the 401k, right? $150 away a week. That's about six or $7,000 a year. They'll say, I'm, I'm going to put that away a week. Healthcare, depending on how many kids you got, dude, it could be anything. <laughs> That's just the truth of the matter. It could be anything. But that should have been something you thought of when you picked your company. You see what I'm saying? You should have thought of that. So, the coming into my inbox and, 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 and only having a how much I'm going to make conversation it no longer works i'm not i'm not really entertaining that no more because from experience i know that that basic premise of thought is is a lie that doesn't work that doesn't work for you cuz you're not factoring other things you other things you need so once you now now when you if you're thinking this way when you do pick a company let's say that you're not you're not lease you will be thinking about what is their benefits package? Because all these people will tell you what their pay package is. But no one's ever told you. Ask about their benefits. Because usually it's coming from a person who isn't thinking about benefits at all. So they're not telling you to think about it. They're only telling you this much a mile. That's it. Then let's say it's the mile that you want. You can end up, you just talk about on a company guy standpoint, you can end up with a thousand thirteen hundred dollars a week every Friday but your benefits package once you add it all up is 260 a week <laughs> it's 260 a week so you make a thousand a week that's 260 a week where are you at you understand are you nine eight you down to seven and they took taxes off the gross where are you at then you're saying well they don't pay me enough money well they hit you with a per mile and then you find out they have a crappy health care and disclaimer if you're someone who has children that are not living with you and you're from the great state of Virginia they force you to put them on your insurance it's deeper than rap you have to think past that what is the benefits package how often do I get to get home does this company give me a, a, do they have other packages with the bills that I have to carry? Because you may say, you know, I have car insurance. Well, some of these companies have discounts on car insurance. They have discounts on your cell phone. These questions you can ask. Do you have discounts on Verizon? AT&T? You have discounts on uh, Geico? State Farm? And they're considerable discounts. They can be 10, 20%. You know, your Verizon bill is about 200 bucks when you, your old lady, and your child, 200 bucks. And 20% ain't, ain't a bad deal. You, you can save about 40, 50 bucks, which you can then allocate towards whatever you, you want to do. It takes a, a, a lens. You need to be peering into this lens. You shouldn't just be how much they make them gone. That is a mistake. And I want this video to be um, quiet enough for you to, to get the point. You have to get the point. Because your days out here is numbered. The number is not numbered of when you will be able to do it. It's numbered to how long you're going to want to do it. You're going to get to a point where you're just like, I just don't want to really do this no more. I feel like I've done it. I have nothing else to pride. I don't want to do this anymore. But if you were thinking this way from jump, you're saving that 150 a week, right? About seven grand a year. You did 10. What is that? Comment below what it is. It's a chunk of change, which could have went down on a decent crib, or it could have been your nest egg for you to transition into another position and try to say, okay, I have enough money to live for this amount of time until I figure out what the next chapter of my life is going to be. 
and understanding and just really understanding that you don't need any debt. You're trying to because debt keeps you in the seat. Now you can't quit. And these guys out here who are all in your face and telling you, oh, I've been doing this this year, I'm doing it for that long. What they're not telling you is that they are stuck. They cannot quit. They don't have an option. And they no one's going to come on here and really get into this conversation because, you know, it's an uncomfortable conversation. But how many of them are they? I don't, I can't, I don't, I can't even give you a number. But it's a lot of them. And if you're taking advice from someone who's stuck in a position from their own ignorance, you're taking tainted advice, fruit from the poisonous tree is all you're taking. Now he telling you what you got to do for 20 years. And if you did what you're supposed to do, you don't have to be doing this for 20 years. <laughs> you don't. There's nothing wrong if you want to. There's nothing wrong with it if you want to do this for 20 years, but you don't have to like he does. He has to. He doesn't have a choice. So, I want you to understand the options. You know, the cars, the houses, those things will come. But what you're doing is securing a, a situation to where you do this as long as you want to do it. I'm on my way out. I've been doing this for eight years, going on nine. I'm going to be a bad You know, I'm... Uh, Luckily, I caught on in my 30s. There's people who didn't catch on to this. I need to not be stuck in this seat. They don't catch on to it until 40 some years old, 45. They've been doing it for 22 years. And those are the guys that I've been doing it for 22 years, and they want that to be their claim to fame. But if it's not what they wanted to do, it that's a failure. Unless they wanted to do it. If they wanted to do it, and they say, I'm good, and I paid this all, and did that, and that, it's cool. We're not talking about the ones who, this is just what I do, and I like to do it. That's success, because it's what you wanted to do. The man on the side of the road is technically successful. Right? The, the guy who's standing on the side of the road is kind of doing better than you, if you think about it. If you really break it down. Because if you're in debt, you're negative broke. At least he don't have no debt, <laughs> right? And he's on a no job, so state's giving him health care. Free. Right? So if he decides to not pander that day, he can go to the soup kitchen and get a meal. There's no bill collector calling him if he has a phone. <laughs> you know, like, but that that's, it's a little cerebral, but eh, you got to think about it. No one's dinging his credit report. He doesn't have anything. So is he successful? Now, some people say, well, he's not successful because he doesn't own a house. He doesn't have this and that and all these things. But, hey, you know, he ain't stressed out either. Yeah, he, he could be on drugs. But if that's what he wanted to do, who's to say he's not successful? You got to have a fluid thought of success before you get here because your rigid thought of success trucking needs you to have that when i say trucking i'm just going to call it big trucking big trucking is the, the the regime they need you to have a grandioso view of success when you get to them it is the old story that i told about about the lion owning the school for the, the gazelle if the lion owns the school for the gazelle are the gazelle in a good situation? And that is the situation that we are in, in um, I would say in this, not only in the country, but in this industry. The predator owns the school, right? So I'll tell you the story about the lion on the gazelle. Get a spot in the lorry. The lion and the gazelle. The gazelle's walking one day. You're the gazelle. And the gazelle was looking for a healthy place where he can go get, um, you know, he can, he can go get something to eat or what we would call currency. But in the gazelle's, it's grass. It's looking for grass. So he's trying to pick the best patches of grass and how to always obtain grass and have it for his family and everything. So he goes to the, 
the sale the gazelle school of grazing he goes into the school sits down teacher walks in the teacher which he really don't know it is a lion who eats gazelles so the lion tells him listen make sure you find the loneliest patch of grass because that will be where the best pickings is and only eat that grass in the middle of the night and never bring anybody with you the gazelle's writing it down he's in school oh this is good stuff and you know it's, it checks out no one grazing that grass it will be richer it will have more opportunity he also tells them if you want to get the best tasting grass and the best nutrients, you know, do it at night by yourself and make sure you're far away from a place where you can't run. Gazelle goes and checks it out. He's right. Oh, first night. This is good. This is, you know, that's school. I'm, I'm a man. I've got my first thousand dollar paycheck on my first patch of grass. So now whatever the school says. It's true. Gazelle so gets back to school. He tells him, hey man, make sure you tell your buddies about this. Tell them, make sure they go by themselves. And he does it. He believes everything that everything the, the, the teacher, lion, the teacher, trucking school tells him. Just like the trucking school will tell you. A square front truck can't make no money. An old truck can't make no money. You got you should get a brand new one. And you should get it from us because we don't charge a down payment. You should only run under us because then your, your fuel's taken care of, everything's good. Never do that other stuff. Those other people aren't successful. You should just stick here. So one night he, he, he heads out there. He does everything the lion truck in school tells him to do. Right? He gets to the place. He's eating. He's about two hours in the grazing. When he turns around, there's the teacher. And he says, what are you doing here? And the teacher bites him. And he says, why are you biting me? Well, that's just what I do. I'm a predator. But you told me, but this is the, this is the, the main point of the story. You can't be taught by the person who's eating you. It's a conflict of interest. The person that is feeding off of your health, money you make, the bills on your lease truck, they, they can't teach you. They can't teach you. Because they're going to indoctrinate you into their predatory situation. I'm not going to tell you to go here and make them people money. I'm going to tell you to stay here and make me money. I'm not going to tell you to go get a truck that doesn't cost a lot of money. I'm going to talk you into buying my truck that makes me a lot of money. I'm not going to tell you to go run off of these markets. I'm going to tell you to only run off of our market. It, it, it's skewed. It's, it's a conflict of interest. Right? These schools are not separate of the company. They're not. These schools are you know, dang, they're attached to the company. So they're there to feed you to the predator. And that's the overall company that's going to tell you, run hard, never worry about this, never worry about that. As your health goes down the drain, they're telling you to run harder. As your family's falling apart, they're telling you to run harder. Right? As you're losing a thousand a week in, in truck notes, they're telling you to keep the truck note. You pay your truck off. They're trying to get you to you know, turn that one in, get a get a bonus, and then get another one. They're the predator. They will run you all the way into diabetes. They will run you because because you're listening to the lion. Now, am I going? Am I going to tell you never to go to these places? Because these places will get you your start. But what I really want you to do is not completely fall into the indoctrination and listen to what they're saying. Because there is a point to what they're saying. There's a reason why they're telling you everything they're telling you. Because if you dissect everything they teach you, it's to keep you there. 
It's not for you to do better. It's not for any of those things. It's for them to make money. And it should be. I mean, they didn't force you to come sit down at the dinner table. And the only thing about real life is you technically don't know who the lion is. So you should be very picky about your teachers. You know what I mean? That's all I wanted to say to y'all. I'm going to do a couple more videos. And we'll talk about more things, but that's just something I want you to understand. Never take lessons from the predator without a grain of salt at least right without a grain of salt you may find yourself taught right into the oven and when it's all said and done you're 50 years old you're missing teeth you own the sugar you got the sugar the diabetes but you got too much debt to get out and you just have to accept that you're gonna drive until you die or financial ruin but don't take my word for it I'm just talking the original